Brandon, what time scale are you looking at with Daniel Sturridge and what could England have done better to minimise the risk of this injury happening? It could be up to three weeks, um, which is obviously disappointing because I think it was a, an injury that could have been avoided. I think it's always difficult. Players go away. I always say to them to concentrate on their, their countries when they go away. And, and of course, at times, players will get injured. You know, we've got Emery Khan back from Germany who could be out for up to six weeks with his ankle. He got his ankle injured when they were 6 0 up. And we got Joe Allen back playing on an awful pitch who has got an issue with his knee. Uh, but those, those are the types of things that can happen in the games, and, and it's unfortunate. But I think, like the Daniels situation was for us, it would be a recovery day. He was a certain type of player um, where he's fast and dynamic, so his recovery. Day, like we do with all the players, it's individualised here, and uh, and that was a disappointment for us. It would have been a recovery day, so uh, so for him to pick up a thigh injury when he did was something that was disappointing for us. So are you looking for more dialogue between yourselves and England with how they uh, with how they treat your players? I think there's there's good communication. You know, I I speak regularly with Roy, and I haven't obviously spoken to him after this. Uh, case since the, the guys have returned, but uh, you know, I speak regularly with the, with the international managers, and, and as I said, I've got good communication with Roy. But as I said, Roy's probably been led by maybe some of the experts that sports science people that he maybe has around him, and um, and for whatever reason, Dan was deemed uh, able to train. It's just something that knowing the player well, as I said, for us. Those types of players, you have to recover players individually after games. You can't throw a blanket over them and just think that one recovery fits everyone because it doesn't. Players are different types. You know, with Luis Suarez here, and on an active recovery second day, he would have needed to work and do some extra work, um, and that made him available. And, and we were happy with that. Other players, because they're fast, they're dynamic. They need a different type. So it's about the individual, it's not about everyone just being blanket covered, as I said. So, uh, so hopefully we can communicate in the future more, uh, because as I said, it's about maximising the player's availability to play. And um, for us, obviously, we've lost a player who was outstanding in our last game against Tottenham, and, and we feel, certainly feel it could have been prevented. During the international break, also reports of an incident in a behind closed doors family involving Mario Balotelli. Now, whether those stories are accurate or inaccurate, is that something that you have to accept goes along with bringing in someone like that? No, not at all. Well, it's obviously a story that was made up. You know, I, the guy absolutely done nothing wrong, which was a shame. I think we, we played a game here. Uh, fantastic game it was. Both Kenny and I were here watching the game against Wolves. Kenny Jacket, it was a great game. Both teams needed it towards the end of the, the, the break at the international break in the first week. Uh, really competitive game, a good game. And, and Mario falls over, tackled by the young guy who I know very well, young George Saville. I've known him since he was nine years of age. Terrific young player who's just gone to Wolves. Both of them uh, tackle, they fall over. George gets up, rubs his head, and the next time I see it, it's reported that Mario kicked him in the head. So uh, it's incredible what people write and what's reported, but there was no incident at all, and, and Mario has been as good as gold since he's come in. How do you ensure that something like that doesn't impact neg negatively on Mario and also the team? Well, it doesn't. It's, it doesn't. We, we just move on. What do you? Sorry, please, just in terms of, of that break, obviously Stephen Gerrard has had a longer break than he might normally have had. How? Has he reacted to that extra time? If it's not too early to say, how do you expect him to? I'm sure he enjoyed it. <laughs> After 14 years, his first international break, it was it was great for him, and he, he gave his country everything. This was that first breather that he's had. I gave him an extra few days off to recover, knowing that we've got a real busy schedule coming up over these next couple of months. So, um, so Stephen. He, he looks after himself ever so well. Great professional, and he's come back this week and, and looked very good. 
Um, just in terms of this weekend, Aston Villa, third, and obviously other days again, third mm -hmm. in the table. Um, would you see them as the, the early surprise package, or is that something that you saw coming? It's too early. It's only three games in. I think what they have done is they've started well. They've, you know, I'm pleased for, for Paul because a few years ago when he went in there, I remember at the same time as myself, it was a period where he's gone in and, and looked towards building a young group of players. And obviously the first season was difficult, but as they've went on, he's been able to work with them and they've developed and grown. They've got better. And, and I think this season we'll see them, you know, and their young players really, as I said, that faith that he put in them, bear fruit, hopefully. So, uh, no, he's an excellent manager, good guy as well. And as I said, it's no surprise because they've got some talented players there. And, uh, and we know at Anfield, it's, it's been a tough game for us the last couple of years. We lost the, deservingly lost the game when I was here in the first season. They were better than us. And then we started slowly last season, but real, showed real character to come back and, and draw the game. So we understand it'll be a tough game, but, uh, but we'll look forward to it. Can you see any of Roy Keane's influence, perhaps, in his team so far? No, I think Roy's obviously come in. I'm sure he's delighted to be back in there working. Um, Paul's really looking to put his stamp on the on the club, uh, and as I said, he's 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 brought Roy in to uh, to support that. You know, Paul's teams are always, you know, they always work very hard. They always look to play good football, and they look to have good good energy, and uh, and I see no difference in that. Just finally for me, as far as your injury list is concerned, you mentioned Ryan Ray and, and Daniel Hazard would be else looking. Yeah, the, the guys, Martin Scott won't be available for the weekend, but hopefully we'll, we'll join up with the, the team when we train on Sunday. Glenn Johnson still has got a wee way to go. Um, young John Flanagan's <coughs> edging towards, but still is it not in the, in the squad yet. Uh, like I said, Joe Allen is picked up a knock whilst he's been away with Wales, so we just need to assess that for the weekend. Um, Adam? Adam Lallana, not. Adam's been back in. He's obviously been back in now for the last couple of weeks in the squad, so uh, so he's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Brendan, given the injury to Daniel Sturridge, um, will we see Ricky Lambert get his first start in the We shall see. Ricky's been very good since he's come in. He's, he's obviously mostly had an impact. Uh, from the bench, and uh, you see it even with England the other night when he came on, you know, showed good ability to, to let the ball roll across his body and played a, a great way to pass into Danny Welbeck, who goes on and scores. So, uh, so at this moment in time, Ricky's working very well, and uh, if he doesn't get a start, he will certainly definitely start against Middlesbrough in the cup. So, uh, so his game time will will come, uh, but at the moment he's playing a great role. A supporting role coming off the bench, but he's working very well. Is it going to be important how you manage your players over the next few weeks? Because there is, is such a busy period. Yeah, we've we've planned out the next five games. You know, the teams right through up until till Everton, but of course you have to allow for injuries and whatnot. You know, that was something that we were doing over the international break. It's very important that. You can rotate, but you also have to retain the consistency in your teams. You know, and I think the the best teams and the most successful teams do that. You have to rotate certain players, but you also have to be consistent. So there will be changes in games, but there's not going to be wholesale changes because, as I said, you still need that core of players to take you through the games. You, you brought in the numbers to cope with the extra demands of the Champions League. Do you feel that like you brought in the right sort of quality to to, to compete? Yeah, absolutely. I think we've had a great window. There's been a lot of work that's gone into it. But if I look at the, you know, young Albert Moreno, his performance last week at Tottenham in only his second game. You know, when he played a few weeks back, it was excellent. Young Xavi Manke, who's come in and just settled right in for such a young player, it's done great. Adam, as I said, well, he'll go on and, and show his qualities. Like Emery was unfortunate, just starting to find his feet and get his fitness and his, and his power back. And so obviously that's a disappointment that he's out. And the other boys, as I said, Ricky settled in really well. And like I said, the Ian Loverun has come in and been fantastic. So 
So I think the players that we've brought in have been really, really pleased because obviously we were specific in the types that we were bringing in, that certain type of profile in, and they've all come in and, and adapted very, very well. Do you think it would be easy to manage in terms of the standards Champions League and Premier League rather than Premier League and Europe League that you had to do before? Listen, it's never easy. There's no easy way. You know, it doesn't matter the competitions. Football players, they want to play. And they want to play in competitive games. That's and, and the players at this level are, are very competitive. So, um, but I always trying to be open and honest with the players, recognise and acknowledge that they do want to play, but also keep their focus and keep the concentration, knowing that they will be needed. And it's not always about the eleven that's playing; it's the players behind that. So they all feel the importance in the group. And as I said, I speak regularly with those players and. And as I said, they understand where they, where they fit into the, the squad. But he was turning out another bit of international break. When you, when you see sort of the reaction he's getting to those performances, do you, do you welcome that or do you think is it in proportion or do you think he needs a bit of protection? I think he needs protection. There's no doubt about that. You know, we've seen it. I've seen it in, over the years. You know, uh, he's a wonderful talent. He's doing great for Liverpool. Still a lot of things that he, knew, he needs to learn, but he knows that. He's a very mature boy for his age. He's grown into a wonderful young man, and as I said, his consistency, his performances now over the period that he's been in the, the team has been exceptional, really. So I expect him to, to keep progressing. I think in terms of where he's at, we just need to be careful. We see so many young players that the reliance on them, especially with England, for whatever reason, they tend to look for one player to put up on a pedestal and then very quickly knock him down. And England know as well as anyone that they need a team. So they don't have to focus just on Raheem, it has to be the team. And that will always be the winner for England when they come together like they've done in the last game. They were excellent against Switzerland as a team. So Raheem will make mistakes, he'll have bad games. But it also have outstanding games, and I think it's just, you know, keeping the calmness with him because he said he's still got a way to go, I think. And but he certainly performed at a real high level and a real consistent level. Yeah, can I just check one thing before I ask a question? Just with Victor Valdez, Brendan, is, is that still a chance of happening in coming in or, or not? First, I'd heard of it. Uh, <laughs> and finally, then, um, Sepp Blatter spoke at Soccer X uh, regarding. Uh, trialling the managers being able to challenge your referee's decision. What are your thoughts on, on that possibly being implemented? To complicate the game even more? <laughs> no, I think it's one where it's not something that I would be overly keen on, to be honest. You know, the, the game is hard enough for, for referees, and I think, as I said, once we get some sort of technology in to maybe analyse some of the decisions, but I don't think it needs a, a manager for a timeout like basketball, no. Okay, cheers.